All right, guys, welcome to Live Review 25, if I've got it labeled correctly. And uh, as you can see, we've got usual suspect Dean from Dean's Beer Reviews. I'll do. And that was completely throwing myself off there because I forgot to pause the, uh, the live video feed so I could read comments. Mm. So I just heard myself. Okay. All right, then. So, and uh, aside from Dean, apologies about that, we also have Harry from Blue Nose Beer Reviews joining us tonight as well. Good evening. And for 25, uh, we thought we'd do something a little bit special and uh, reviewing two beers, as usual. Uh, both came from the Oktoberfest box from Beer 52, which ironically had no Oktoberfest beers in it. But it did have some pretty interesting German craft beer, albeit some of them brewed in uh, Anders in Belgium, which I know some people have issues with. But to be honest, if a brewery is happy to have their recipe brewed somewhere else and then they're happy with the end product, I can't see too much of an issue. But um, ironically, only one of the, the beers today is actually German. And the other one is a British brewery, um, but in a German style. But before we get into that, how are you guys doing tonight? Not bad. Not bad. Looking forward to these beers. Glad to yep. hear it. I'd say the same. I'm knackered. And I'm looking forward to a cold brew. Oh, yes. Hashtag so, see what I did there. Hashtag he's a clever boy. <laughs> so speaking of cold brew we are looking at cold brew from siren craft or siren craft brew as they like to be called mm. and uh, this is described as a cold steeped coffee schwarz beer clocking in at five percent abv and uh as Dean pointed out as we were before we went live, um, this could be a, a rebrew or a variation on another beer that they did for the coffee or the barrister series. But um, yeah, looking yeah. forward to this one. Because the Brazilian coffee. Brazilian mm. coffee, very nice. Because I'm a, I'm a big fan of Siren, but I never drink Siren beers for whatever reason. Same. I think they're a little bit tricky to get hold of. I, I say that as I was in um, uh, Canic just now recently, and they had loads and loads of different siren brews in there. And I'm like, it's so hard to get siren, but there's loads here, and which I just never pick up. Um, I think it's just more so for me. It's like one of those breweries that I just kind of ignore and don't buy. You see them around a lot, and then just don't. Buy. I see them around a lot at that shop, and then just don't buy them. Because it's not, you know, it's not just, it's, it's, well, one, it's not hype enough. And two, it's just not, like, promoted enough. There's nothing yeah. in social media. But I don't see anything at all. So, like, they, they may well come out with a new brew every sort of week, but I don't know about it. So, I just don't buy them. Um, that said, I have had this beer before. Had it on draft. Um, in... Drapers in Coventry about two, three months ago, mm -hmm. and uh, I'll reserve. Well, I won't say anything just yet. But it was, it was good. It was good. Yeah, it was nice on cake, cold. So we'll see what it is like warm. Uh, yeah, mine's been out of the fridge for about half an hour. Well, both of them have. So Same still a, a little bit of chill, but not enough to mask any flavours. Well, I hope so. And then the, the second beer that we have is, uh, it's a style that I don't drink a lot of. In fact, I can't even remember the last time I had um, this style of beer. But it comes from BRLO in Berlin, who are quite a hyped brewery from what I can gather in Berlin. And uh, you can get a few of their beers every now and then in the UK. But uh, again, we don't get much German craft at all which is a real shame so that's why with this beer 52 box 
it's probably been my favourite box of the year just because we finally get German craft, albeit brewed in Belgium for the most part, uh, to the UK. Mm. But uh, the beer itself is the Baltic Porter clocking in at 7% ABV. And Super no English on the back. But you can translate now. Uh, I'm not going to attempt that, I'm sorry. <laughs> not right now. Maybe a little bit later. Wouldn't filter his Baltic butter mid caramel. I, I can tell you what that means. <laughs> yeah. Did a good job there, Harry. Thank you. If you want to read out the rest to it. <laughs> Schokoladen und Kaffeenoten. So schmeckt er ist schon Katharina de Groben or Groschen. Um, Nistrav, that, that word. Nistrovia. That, is that Nistrovia? Is it just like a. It looks like Nistrovia. Yeah. Spelt by a retard um, who doesn't know what vowels are. Yeah. I hate that thing where <laughs> there's words when they purposely miss out the valve. Vowels? Yeah. Vowels. You have the vowels. I don't know those vowels. Yeah, I don't know. Have you guys had any beers from BRLO before no, this I one? First half from it, exactly. It's it's another one of those siren things. You see them about, not super as often as siren, but you see them about, and then I just like don't pick them up. Um, this I, I don't. I've never seen it on keg, or well, you're not going to see it on caps, but I've never seen it on keg. Mm. But um, I've seen them in, in the bottles available and the bottles online and stuff, but it just never seems to be something I go for. It's just, you know, I'd, I'd, there's a thousand things that pick up ahead of it. So it's nice to get something and uh, kind of be forced by Beer 52 to try it. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was still Baltic Porters, the, the ABV was always a little bit more than 7%. Yeah. Yeah. Rounding, oh, rounding nines, aren't they? Nines and tens, aren't they, for like a, a, an authentic Baltic? Yeah. I think, um, didn't Ingalls Browdy, didn't they? Haven't they done one? They've done, or was it the Baltic Double that they've done? Yeah. Baltic Double, yeah. I think they've done a Baltic Double, a Baltic Porter, and I'm sure they've done a Baltic Tripel uh, or Triple. Yeah, it were in the paper. I've definitely had the Baltic uh, double, which is quite nice. Uh, but that was some time ago. But yeah, it's 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 nice, as you say, Peter, just just to try some more German craft. I, mm. I was really really impressed with the uh, cream ale actually, which I had the other night. Yeah, that was nice. Again, nice. another another style you very rarely see. Yeah. And I went straight after drinking it. I was trying to build a recipe um, to brew it. I was. Something I might just jump on and ask people like, um, we probably haven't had it, but Genesee was it Genesee cream ale? I know I, I hear a lot of people speaking about it, and I'm like, I'd love to know what it exactly tastes like, uh, because I want to brew it. I've managed to find a couple of clones online and then try to scale them up to my sort of size. And, um, yeah, I'm gonna be brew one, brewing one probably in the new year, but just what people's thoughts of uh, Genesee cream ale will be very handy uh so i kind of know what i'm brewing rather than just brewing something blindly and yeah. being horrible and then just naming it a cream man <laughs> yeah <laughs> but i mean yeah it's, i'd love to try an authentic i know you're pretty much going to have to go macro for it to try an authentic cream out but i want to know what they're all about i think the only ones i've had are where they've added something to it yeah. So you're not getting that sort of like authentic cream ale, mm. essentially. I've, I've, yeah, I think it's, it's the same. I think that one was with vanilla, was it? Uh, added. I think that was some vanilla added, which made it a little bit more creamy and yeah. And sweet. Uh, I think the only previous one I've had recently was one which was brewed by the Chapman's Kitchen, but he brewed it. He was the the Bournemouth site and he brewed it with cocoa and uh, coffee and it came out quite nice but he said it would just prefer if he had a little bit more coffee in it mm. um, 
but yeah, it's it's a style you, you just don't see. And I, I did a Google search straight afterwards, just trying to find where I can get some more cream emails from. And this was like, no, nowhere online. Can, uh, you know, sell, I, think, I think there was only one German site which I could find that sold cream emails quite easily. I think I picked one up from Gonzo a, a, lot, a long while ago from Weird Beard. Oh, I really? I think they did a cream ale. Um, I'm I'm thinking of another another brewery. It does it in cans? They do like a Honcho Hefeweizen. I can't remember what they're called now, but they do a. Let me just Google it. Hon, they do Honcho Hefeweizen, and they do a cream ale, and that's the only other brewery. And I think it was the first time I had uh, Mother Earth Brewing Company. So I had Earth, a, yeah, yeah, had a, had a cream ale from them, and I was like, I think it was the first time I had a cream ale. I was like, what is this? I'm really unsure about it, and then. Kind of looking back at it, I really like it now because it's a little bit more than a lager. It's got a little bit more flavour to it, and it's kind of like a lager and hefe sort of mix. And nice, but that yeah, we're going. I'm going way off topic, so apologies. No, no, no problem. <laughs> but uh, yeah, to go, to go with the uh, was that it was the vanilla killer? Yeah, was that? yeah, that was it. Yeah, still got another bottle of that because I got two boxes because I wanted to make sure I had every beer available which oh, uh nice. don't think i'll be doing that again because uh, <laughs> one box is enough because i really need to stop spending money on like mm. subscriptions although the two old advent calendar it's happening i don't care if i'm gonna skimp myself i'm getting that yeah so anyway i'll have a quick look at a comment at the comments and then we shall uh, decide which beer we want to start off with so before the stream started, Thomas McCarthy said hello. How you doing, hello. Thomas? Hope all is well. And then we've got a couple of comments from Craig from Kent Beer Reviews. How are you doing, my friend? You are, Craig. Uh, he says, I love Siren. The breakfast out this year was beautiful. And he said, still got, still got all of this box and a few from the previous box. He's on a little bit of a beery hiatus. But, um, yeah, I think I had the, the breakfast stout from Siren quite recently. Didn't do a review of it because I just wanted to drink it. And then I think before that I had the rebrew of $10 Shake, and that's about it. I can't remember what I had before that. I think the last one I had was when me and Dean did the live review of the, the lager. Yeah. That they did. But yeah, it's it again. The siren, I just never had a bad experience, but even though I see them quite often, I just never really gravitate to buying them. So I think mm. with that being said, we should kick proceedings off with the cold brew Schwarz beer. Go for it. Oh, this smells nice. Ooh, yeah. I got a whiff of that when I opened it, and nose was nowhere near it. Oh, yeah, clown water glasses. Oh, yes. Butt plug style. It is such an odd shape, but satisfying mm. shape as well. And I think they've they've modernised this style now, haven't they? Where it's just yeah. a little bit taller and a little bit... Like a, these are the Craftmaster 1s and the Craftmaster 2s so is what they do now. So the, uh, I think Magic Rock was the first to kind of take yeah. the Craftmaster 2s. A little bit more rounded. And... I don't they, like them as much. No, they, they remind me of those uh, Kalea glasses. <laughs> which are the bad ones I have. So impractical. Yeah. But I uh, tell you what, that is looking absolutely fantastic mm. that wonderful. is for me pretty much jet black with about one finger's worth of a beige colored head yeah yeah it's a little, holding up to the light there's a little touch of light coming through with a kind of like a ruby color but it is really yeah but lighting's a little bit dark in here so it's probably why it just looks jet black to me but it's the north uh, there we go. Yeah, I can see those ruby hues, actually. <laughs> so completely disregard what I said earlier. 
Oh, smells good. We first made cold brew as project as part of Project Barista 2018. It's a lot. I'm not going to read the rest because it will annoy me. Did you add a cream? It'll hurt your eyes. Yeah. On that bowl. <laughs> Just what? Um, smells wonderful. Though. Oh, chocolatey. It smells yeah, chocolatey coffee. It? It's almost got like a, a chocolate stout vibe about yeah. it. Now that's what I thought when I first had it. I was like, "Is this some form of porter?" And it, because it, it just said cold brew yeah. on it, and then I found out it's a Schwarzbier. Oh, it doesn't taste anything like a Schwarzbier. No, I mean you get that sort of like really dark, roasty, almost slightly burnt malt character. Mm. A little bit of smoke, but yeah, that that coffee is just smokiness. I get that. Mm. It's all about the coffee for me in this, and it's. Implemented really nicely. It's, you, you can tell by the smell of it that it, it, they've they haven't like mucked about with with shitty coffee. It's it's got like a decent sort of quality um, coffee whiffed about it. Yeah. Mm. Mm. No, no Nescafe in this. No, no, definitely not. No, no camp coffee or anything like that. <laughs> yeah, camp coffee. I don't know. It's almost got like a a blue ribband smell to it, like a chocolate wafer. Mm. Mm. Smells good. Mm. I think it's time we tucked in. Cheers. Cheers. Log a mouthfeel, isn't it? The, the oh, body yeah. of it. I'll be thirsty. <laughs> if I am. Well, it's definitely a Schwarz beer for me. Yeah. It's. Um, I've, I'm having mine warm. So, well, not warm, but room temperature sort of thing, because I didn't even put it in the fridge, I just put it in the cupboard. And then it is so much better than when I had it on draft. On draft, it was just too cold. I think I kind of struggle drinking dark lagers and things like that at a, when they're really, really cold. Mm. Um, because, it's, you know, it just gets so much more flavour out of it when it's warm. And with a dark lager, <laughs> there's just so much goes into it more. Than with a lager, when you have a lager, you know, room temperature would be fucking horrible. And this just works much better. Um, oh, it's lovely. It really, get, really you is. More, you get more of that dark, the, the, the darkness that it gives. Um, I mean, mine's just come into room temperature more or less. It, it, yeah. I did chill them down, but I, I pulled them out long before the hang out. Mm -hmm. So for me, mine's just bang on for the style. But, yeah. You know. You do appreciate the, the the back end of it with the roastiness coming through, but drinking drinking like um, you know, it, it has got like a little bit of re re refreshment to it. Yeah, yeah. It's got a nice zing of carbonation, not mm. too overly carbed, yeah. but not too flat. That coffee's nice and delicate in there, isn't it? It's not yeah. too intense. It, I think the thing I find when you see coffee and beer and why some people do get disappointed is because they expect like a really big, intense, like coffee flavor. But you can really taste like the quality of the, the coffee beans in this. It's not like a cup of coffee. You're getting that sort of no. like really raw and earthy coffee bean flavor. Yeah. It, it just works so nicely with the slight smokiness from yeah. the, the dark malts, that roastiness. Not as sweet. It's a lot sweeter on the nose than it is mm. when you actually taste it. Yeah. There's a nice little bit of bitterness coming in from the coffee there. No. Yeah. Okay. It's it's really... It's kind of like, like a, a fudginess about it, which I'm getting. Uh, like a... A slightly bitter, more well, dark chocolate with a bit of a fudgy. 
I suppose. Do so you get past all that in a coffee? Yeah, it's still nice. Mm. Mm. It's really nice here. It was really good. I think it goes it goes side by side with the, with the actual style and not sort of it doesn't take over the Schwarz beer. Mm -hmm. it, it just runs yeah. nicely alongside it. I think it's it's a good balance. I'm actually really in the mood now to get some bottles of the Kostritska after drinking this. That's a really good like that's me's like the pinnacle of like Schwarz beers. Mm. But this this is really good. It's got that like real authenticity about it. You know that they they know the style. They've done the research. Not, yeah. I think if you were, I always ask myself this question as well. When, um, like, for instance, a, a UK craft brewery is has dabbled with a German style, I always sort of think, well, I, I wonder what a German's perspective would yeah. be on it, trying it. I, I, you know, I think they'd enjoy it. Mm. I can't stop drinking it. It's just, yeah, yeah it's, it's, got, it's got that it's log good. crushability to it, yeah. hasn't it? But it's just got a little bit more, well, quite a lot more character than, than like an yeah. easy drinking log. I mean, mm. I think I prefer the Dunkel style because it's just a little bit sweeter. I think you get a, a, bit, a bit more of a rewarding mouthfeel with that as yeah. well, don't you? So yeah. A bit more heavier. Yeah, but they're not they're not taking anything away from this beer though. It's it's just it's just right the way everything's working together. Mm -hmm. hmm. From from memory, when it was my whole when I was having it, the coffee still really really came out. It's coffee and creamy. Um, the only thing that got to me then was the carbonation was a little bit off, a little bit too high. And then on this uh, now, it's I still find for me the carbonation is a little bit high. Yeah. And the body is, it's, I think it comes to the style. I think the body is not, um, but all the flavours that are going on within it are, are wonderful. And, yeah, mm. Really, really strong flavours, coffee and chocolate, and it's really, really nice. It's not a style of beer. It's not a beer that I drink often. Mm -hmm. It's you know kind of something more as a something as a mix up or a palate cleanser. Something just to completely change. Um, but that said, I'd still buy it again. I'd happily buy it again if I saw it again. I'd buy oh, it. And, uh, oh yeah, definitely. Because I know Siren. They're not too expensive. You know, have it as a bit of a fridge filler. Um, if you just want something to change up. I'm surprised they haven't jumped on the uh, Canon bandwagon, really. I thought they, they would be on it a long while ago. Yeah. I think it's cause, just because they get overlooked. I mm -hmm. they just get overlooked yeah. by everyone. Um, they, they do, the thing is, the same for me is with Salopian Brewery as well. They do some banging beers, really, really good beers. They, they, even still 500s, a lot of Salopian beers. Um They've only recently started in three thirties, and they're all solid beers. I mean, there was uh, so I've just uh, been in Plink where I was doing a delivery, and um, they had Auric just go on just for that left, and that is like, it's nothing. It's or it by uh, sloping it's, it's nothing crazy, but it's a solid beer, and um, you know they'll always put that. On. Um, but yeah, just it's. They always get just bottles as well, and uh, they're one of those breweries. It just needs to kind of need a little bit of hype or attention, yeah, outside of locally. I mean, they don't even get anything local, um, but they deserve it. I don't know. They they like reminds me of breweries like Partisan and Arbor. Yeah, these. Yeah, I mean Arbor. I don't know an IPA in like a. Almost like a six sixty mil bottle. Yeah. yeah. 
It was fun. It was amazing. It was an amazing IPA. About a third of the price of a similar style that one of the more popular craft breweries would do. Mm-hmm. But again, you you just they're just always there, but they're never like come drink me, come here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You've got you've got to sort of dig dig a little bit deeper, haven't you? To sort yeah. of just it's got yeah. I, I I get what you mean with that, and I would I would group Siren in with them them sorts of breweries. Yeah. I think a lot of the time they're just very, very safe beers, mm-hmm. which doesn't, yeah. you know, their beers that sell, I understand what they're doing, and they sell, and that's all fair and, well, you know, fair and good, but if they were to go out and do a cream ale, or if they were to have to go and do, like, you know, um, you know an Imperial Stout, or something, something a little bit different, um, Imperial Stout, not, not really different, but, you know, just something a little bit more interesting, other than pails and, you know, bitters or whatnot i don't think i've actually ever done bitter anyway but so it's something more interesting and i think they would actually sell and they actually get the, some more attention drawn to them but they just don't yeah um so opium is definitely one they do a lot of ca- a lot of cask in my area um and it's a lot of cask of standard pale ales and bitters solid stuff yeah but it's like you yeah. know it's at the same time i just want something a little bit more interesting than that's why I'm, I'm 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 like always a bit finger with the likes of Weird Beard because I'd lump mm. those in with that sort, of, but they do some really off the wall beers yeah. that should be getting more attention just because of the concept of those beers. But again, it's like you'd never you'd never see people criticizing them, but at the same yeah. time, you know, you you feed on like Instagram or Untapped or Facebook. It's never like full of. This is the latest such such a weird beard or yeah. the latest beer from Siren. And so it's a real shame because they're just they're obviously doing well enough to keep going. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think for me me with like weird beard is like the, the, the latest weird beard comes from, from you, Dean. Whenever we well last time when we did our hangout uh, or oh, our the, uh, the vanilla imperial stout was it in the, with the wax neck on it. Yeah, and it was pretty damn decent. Yeah. And even even I the time to, before, I need, to, I need to post all them bloody videos. I still got a <laughs> fucking yeah. I've still got a few. I need to get a fucking computer mouse and be able to upload them. Yeah, that so. yeah, that was pretty pretty decent. Um, Real <laughs> stout. Have you ever have you ever had the Sadako Imperial Stout from Weird Beard? That's in that, a big bottle as well. Yeah, isn't it? that's a really, really good imperial stout. But again, it's like it's just it's not. I hate using the words like fashionable or trendy, but it just doesn't seem to be fashionable or mm. trendy. It's a shame that a lot of breweries. See, I don't. Do I don't. Like yeah, that. that's that. Yeah, that's. Oh. I'm like, but I do fall guilty of buying this sort of somewhat similar because i'm always going to buy like a northern monk patrons project wherever i go i'll probably end up buying something like a siren or a track mm. but i've yeah. never really done it where it's like just yeah i don't need burden or dare i'm gonna go for arbor i'm gonna go for weird beard yeah. i'm gonna go for tour side mm. but I've had, yeah i've had much more satisfaction from those because i don't have these like really high expectations I'd, I think, I'd get yeah. if I ever got the opportunity, and probably you have, Harry, because I know you can get some bizarre stuff. The, the Courage Imperial Stout. Mm. Um, you, you used to be able to buy that in Tesco's many moons ago, um, but it's just obviously it's just disappeared now. But that, that's like a beer that I I, I so want to try it just just to get that experience. But again, I, I suppose it would just. I don't know. I've never had it, but would it, would it be you know a, just a bog standard one of the well, imperial stout or like I tried um, Sam Smith's imperial stout for the first time uh, ever a, c- a couple of months ago now, and to be honest, I didn't think very much of it because it was it was an old school imperial stout, no doubt, and I love old school imperial stouts. I had one just the other day with a brew dog one, but it was an old school imperial stout at like. It wasn't even imperial stout strength. It was like, 
it was like seven or was eight it, or was it whatever the it was. Thornbridge Imperial. Oh, the yeah, Thornbridge Imperial, even. Um, and do you know, um, is it uh, Acorn Brewery? Have you ever oh, tried yeah. this from them? They're, I felt the uh, student documentary there. It was fucking awful. Golovka <laughs> Imperial Stout, 6%. Oh, yeah. oh fuck <laughs> yeah. You can buy them with the spoons as well. Um, it's a nice beer, but it's not an Imperial Stout. But yeah. No. But I think I think we've got mm. to that point now where when you when you see Imperial Stout, you're expecting big bold flavors, forty yeah. percent at least, treacle like yeah. body, mm. every adjunct and flavoring you mm. can put in it. Whereas you know the, these classic, yeah. like sort of like um, the Fuller's Imperial Stout. Oh yeah, yeah, they they are they're pretty decent in my book. I quite yeah. But the sad thing is. They wouldn't stand up to like the to... hype of such yeah. and such I mean, as imperial stout, which is a real shame. If if it was like a normal like everyday imperial stout by say Sill Hill Brewery, no, it wouldn't. But if it if it's like Fuller's, you know, Fuller's it would because it's like oh tradition American and all that bullshit, and it, and it, and it would do. And stick it in a nice box. Yeah, yeah put it in a box. It will sell. Put it, put it in Waitrose, it's so well. As did the um, the Anne Union stuff. But yeah, it's I think like they I, I definitely felt I felt guilty of it the other night when I tried the brew dog beer. I was like, Yeah, but it hasn't got lactose in it, it hasn't got adjuncts in it, but <laughs> but it was still quite a nice Imperial style. Uh the um whatever it was, the Russian Imperial style they did. So I had the first, I had a bottle uh, hundred and twenty four uh reviews in is when I had the bottle so I must have bought it very very early on and then I had 124 beer reviews in and I think or 126 or something and, and uh, uh, Billy Beer Reviews um, Brett did it and, and, and commented on it I was like oh Jesus this is a bad review and um, and yeah so he, he commented on it and I was like it's a long long time ago and um, yeah but just comparing the beers I think the one that came out in the can is a, probably a lot better than the one that came out back then because as much as I know my palate wasn't right then, it wasn't as you know good as it or matured as it is now. Um, it just didn't taste like the same beer. And I was even reading my uh, rate beer notes as well. It's just not the same beer. So uh, those are the days. Rate beer noting. Rate right beer, yeah. Rate beer. Right beer. Before it was only by those guys. Champions of lager, right beer, aren't they? Yeah. Champions <laughs> of uh, honest and uh, non-biased objective well, reviews. Those were the days. Uh, okay, so I think I think we can say that Siren's cold brew was a success. So only three point seven five out of five for me. I'm going to give it a, f a 4 out of 5. 8 out of 10. Yeah, 4 out of 5, 8 out of 10. It's just, I enjoy the Schwarz beers, but I've not had enough of mm. them to really appreciate the style. Oh, but, I can buy some really cheap ones and make you really appreciate the style. Oh, yeah, definitely. I, I'm, I'm open to uh, any interpretation. I will send them in <laughs> <laughs> just the big boxes right. <laughs> beers. and uh, speaking of big box of shorts we've got a couple of comments don't know what that means but uh, Craig says just checked I've reviewed 19 beers from Siren uh, that's a lot of beers I think I've reviewed about 5 I probably only drank about 5 which is just a real shame. Uh, yeah. And then he also says, Siren do a lot of barrel-aged beers. Mm -hmm. Which is true. I've, I'm, eight, I've had 18, apparently. Ah. I don't know about you, but the buzz about barrel-aged beers has just died off for me. Yeah. Because they, they just... They get played up too high whereas i find that a lot of the times putting in like a 
a bourbon barrel or a cognac barrel, a barrel, it sort of like it weakens the body a lot of time. Mm, yeah, I'm fine with a pail unless it's got a fuck ton of oats in it. Um, yeah. Then yeah, sometimes I'll put like uh, wheat and it'll you know. I don't use wheat at all now, so I I just stop using it unless I'm doing like a hefeweizen or something like that. But I I just find in general I used to use it a lot and. I compare it to the oats, and I think we've got, as a whole, very much more used to drinking thicker, creamier IPAs or thicker, creamier pale ales. Mm-hmm. So everyone's now going for oats. Um, and then when you look back on, you know, I, I think it was having Goose Island, um, their Midway, yesterday, and I know the recipe of that. It's just made with wheat, and you compare it, and it's so thin in comparison, <laughs> but you know, then you compare that to a lager, and it's like, oh, the lager's even thinner. So, yeah, I think we've just kind of become a little bit more accustomed to having thicker beers. Yeah, everything being so thick with two C's. But yeah, thick with two C's, fat with a pH. <laughs> but uh, it's like, yeah, I don't know. I I, I tend to build up like barrel aged beers up in my mind. Oh, I think, oh, this is beer for a special occasion. But you're drinking, it's like, yeah, it's, it's okay. Mm. I've had so many more experiences like that with specifically barrel aged beer, so it's like, yeah, it's all right. As opposed to like the standard version or like the current vintage of that. But then again, you get some beers where it's just out of this world when mm. they've been aged properly wow. in a barrel before release. Yeah, yeah. But I'm sure that's a different topic for a different day because we've got more beer to drink. And uh, appreciation for Craig for keeping the comments rolling on the video. So I'm going over to Germany now. With the, I've never known how to properly pronounce it. Do you pronounce each letter or do you say Berlo? I have no idea, but... Foreign yeah. stuff. Yeah, foreign these people with their different languages and way of pronouncing things. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Dyslexic, aren't they? Seven <laughs> percent Baltic Porter. A style that I'm even more unfamiliar with than the the Schwarz beer. Mm. Blue. 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 Sounds like me vomiting. I think that's how you're supposed to say it. Yeah. Just a vomit. Oh. I pulled out like an arse. Ooh, nice actually. Fruity. Mm. Oh yeah. I wasn't Fruity. expecting that. No, I wasn't. I was expecting like chocolate and coffee and craziness but no it's not it's a it's a Baltic it's a bit, it's a... <laughs> smells like a, a, a like a, a dumbed down barley wine a bit yeah yeah I was thinking because you know, it's saying, pouring like a barley wine something like a, I was actually weirdly thinking something like a strong ale because it smells like a it smells quite rich yeah like, rich in fruit rich yeah. in fruit like a steeped Christmas pudding. Yeah. Well, there's, sort of, there's sort of like savoury funkiness about it as well. Yeah. Colours like ruby. Ruby, dark. Yeah. Dark ruby. Mm-hmm. With your little Oktoberfest glass, I like it. Oh, yeah. Which, uh, again, massive thank you to uh, And Union. I think I might have to just like gape for Andy Union. That's all I have to do to receive their glassware. I mean, yeah. I've got it all, but. See, the, see the, there's no, before we get into it, no bias will ever come into play, but it's so good when people show the appreciation back. Yeah. Oh, I love it. And it's not just about getting like the freebies, it's the fact that. You sit down or you stand up, you record a review and you, you don't think much of it, you just upload it. But it's the idea that it could mean something to the person who's brewed it. 
Hmm. Yeah. I, was, I, I, had, I did a little review of their beers last night. I had the Steph Weiss and the, or the, the Unfiltered Lager, which Dean bought me before and kind of introduced me to it. And I was like, these are fucking good. Mm. Yeah, and, that uh, Unfiltered Lager is I've just... I've got a lot of time for, for them. They're, they're, yeah. Again, go-to beers for me. You know, yeah. you, you know, you can grab them off the shelf for me, local. And I'm guessing you guys now as well. Yeah, um, M&S, I think that's about. Just, just good go-to beers. Yeah, but that, that that's Steph Weiss because I, I I drink a lot of uh, Weiss Stefana, and Steph Weiss. I thought that was absolutely banging. It was better than than Weiss Stefana for me. And Weiss Stefana is really good beer, and I thought it was just a little bit better, even sweeter and uh, nicer. But yeah. You, you've got a, a non-alcoholic uh, beer from them as well, haven't you, Peter? Yeah, a non-alcoholic, non-alcoholic wheat beer, which I'm uh, quite interested in. Mm. I mean, it could be something that I really don't like, but... Hopefully it doesn't well, taste like rabbit hutches, like <laughs> most, most wheat beers, like most like non-alcoholic <laughs> beers. Do. Yeah. Lick that rabbit hutch. It's like... Biscuity, very biscuity. Yeah, definitely. That's bloody glorious, that does. It really does, doesn't it? Yeah. It's got almost it's like, like a, a slight port character to it. Yeah. To me, it's, it smells like Sunday, Sunday roast with... <laughs> yes. Like, it smells like Sunday roast with a Yorkshire pudding and Bisto. It's, it smells fantastic. Do you, to elaborate on that, it smells like when you, you're making the gravy... And the alcohol hasn't burnt off. Yeah. Yep. Completely. That's it. But it's still got that doughiness of the Yorkshire button on the side. Yeah. That smells really, really good. So I think it's uh about well, time we taste. One. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Oh yeah. wow. Mm. That's banging. That is lush. Oh, that is lovely. Mm. I, I get that fruit cake thing in it. That you said. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And I've, I've got to say, with Harry, it's got a slight English strong ale flavour to it. Mm. It's nicely little, fruity. A little bit, a little bit of old Roger going on in there, isn't there? I reckon. <laughs> Yeah. Mm. Oh, just wait one minute because I've got about seven bowls of that. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 they've fucked about with the bloody style, the graphics now on them bottles, though, aren't they? Oh yeah. They brought it into, into line with all the other stuff with that crappy sort of. I don't like the them bottles. They're crap. It's like the meantime bottles. They look shit as well. Yeah. There are just some rebrands, and you think, "Why have you done that?" Yeah. I, I like I like the old styling on them on the old Roger bottles, though. It just it looked it kept oh, in with the beer. I think it it was old. Yeah, it's just yeah. crap. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not a fan of that. No, <clears throat> beer is wonderful. I, on cask, it is marvelous. I had it on cask once, and it's fantastic. You can still get the old the old bottles in in B and M, I think, or at Home and Bargains. Yeah. And like, I think I've seen it for one pound seventy nine. I mean, it's buy them all. Just buy them all. It'll be wonderful. Lot, it, for that price, because it's, it's a damn good beer. I think because I bought this, I have to go up north. I have to, I have to go up to um, some of the dodgy shops in, in around the uh, Sutton, and you get this for one at uh, two twenty uh, or three four six. So uh, I'll pick it up. And it's uh, always a shout. I mean, if the nearest. I don't have any. I don't have a home bargains anywhere near me because they're all home stores. Home bargains homes, or no, uh, B and M home stores. And then the home bargains nearest one is like in Birmingham City Centre, so I'd never go there. And then the other B and M is in Litchfield, so I'm occasionally up there and always check out the beers because I always park in the car park right beside it. And they just go for mini kegs there, and you know you'll be you'll be easily fine like a. A mini keg of hobgoblin, you know, yeah. it's, eight, it's eight quid. It's like a bargain, but it's hobgoblin. 
Uh, so the, the greatest IPA apparently in the UK. In the world. In the world, yeah. World in beer the world, world. Yeah. Greatest oh. IPA. What in a fucking IPA? Um, doomed. Yeah. Doomed bar. Doomed bar, yeah. <laughs> mm. hmm. That's tasting good. Oh, that's, yeah. That's, that's brilliant, that is. Lovely body on it. Yeah. It's got. It's that it's, richness in it as well. Yeah. It's beautiful. It, it's rich but light at the same time, but it's got a real like smoothness to it. Mm. Yeah, it's not too thick, but nice and kind of lightly creamy body. Mm -hmm. Too creamy, but then it's um, a very fruity, raisiny, toffee caramel, a little bit nutty. Mm. It's just perfect it's just a perfect winter beer oh you yeah know, the, the abv of it is seven percent bang on in the middle not too high not too low you can session have a few beer. it is actually a session beer at seven percent yeah yeah you have a few beer. um yeah it's harry's sessions <laughs> but it, yeah it is it's still sessionable um at seven yeah you know the same as i would say old rogers sessionable you can have you know three pints of it and that'll, that'll do yeah but this is really really nice i mean i wouldn't want to try it any colder than what i'm having it out. so no. it's, it's just you know room temperature for this and it's perfect for me that's really really nice beer i mean i, I think this whole month from beer 52 surprised me with the quality of the beers yeah definitely that's it's that way would, higher it's been the best box that i've had so yeah. far very i mean I like I like gauge it on the on the past what four say um, the the German box the Polish box was fantastic. weren't a big fan of the uh, the the Belgian box and the the, the South African box. Yes, yeah, South African box. I didn't even bother with that. But yeah, this this is a damn good box. Have you drunk any of the other beers in the the box yet? um i have i've got i mean i do, do my octoberfest kind of series uh that i'm doing so i've got a video on monday <clears throat> or maybe tuesday uh afternoon sort of time where i drink three more and then the next tuesday another two more uh so i had the cream ale the um pale ale and whatever the other one was maybe an ipa session ipa or something like that oh yeah what did you um, reckon to that pale ale, you two? No, uh, was that the Berliner Berg one? Yeah, yeah, I thought it was a bit mm. nothing. Yeah, I thought it was, fantastic. It, it was one of those beers that you could demolish like a a six pack of in a session. One of those just like really easy drinking ones, but not having too much flavour to. If that makes sense, I, th yeah. I thought that was probably the weakest beer in the box. It didn't quite do it for me. Yeah. Well, I'll find out. I've got plenty left. Um, I've got the Bach, the the, the Choco style. This one I'm actually weirdly looking forward to, but I remember, Peter, you said that it wasn't a great New England IPA, but the artwork is fantastic. Right? Yeah. It, it looks a bit odyssey to me, that, that artwork yeah. on that. That's another brewery that you just never see anymore. Yeah, they, they've gone off, well off the radar, haven't they, Odyssey? Yeah. I think, yeah. All, all, they do, see all they do now, Odyssey. I think all they do now is cask at the moment. I've seen a lot it's, of cask coming out. I did, I did, because I, I get, um, when I put that order in from Ale Cellar, and I, I think I bought like nine beers from Odyssey, um, I subscribed oh. to their newsletter and I got an email a while back saying that they're they're going to be investing in a canning line. Uh, okay, that was back in the summer. So, but I yeah, I haven't seen any of their beers anywhere. No, no. The the last beer I saw was when I was in um, Huddersfield in Arcade, and they had they had yeah. one beer from them, which was um, it was it was a it was an okay single hot pale ale see like you know me and dean not too not too far from odyssey and i just don't see him at all 
I mean, I don't drink in Coventry, but I don't see them. Like the Gloucester, are they? Yeah, the, 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 yeah that, that sort of side. But, you, but even in Birmingham City Centre, you don't see them. And I was chatting to a guy last week or two weeks ago about it, and he was like, yeah, they just don't come into town at all anymore. You know, you'll find them on cask around sort of Leamington Way, maybe Warwick and, and Stratford, but that's about it. You don't see okay. them anywhere around here. Um, and it's like, it's cask, but not very often. So um, I, I don't know what's going on with them. Mm. Um, you know, maybe they go... You know, maybe they go down south more because Bristol's not a million miles away from where they are. And maybe, Bristol's, maybe Bristol's they, big. Yeah. Yeah, Bristol's got a big. Well, speaking of another brewery who sort of like Sire and, and Arbor, Wiper and True. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Again, never had a bad beer from them, but I think I've had yeah. like two or three. They just don't pump out enough. I mean, I've seen, you, you can now get um, their milkshake from uh, Beer Wolf, I think it's. So, well, you can I'm get it in Waitrose, can't you, as well? I, I don't have a Waitrose anywhere yeah. near me, so I, I don't think, even look. I think you can actually get this in a, from Beer Wolf as well. Uh, okay, that's probably where I've seen it, to be honest, is a Beer Wolf. I, I, I do need to do a little Beer Wolf. Yeah, I need to do a Beer Wolf. They've got a lot of... Uh, quite low prices. The prices aren't quite as low as they used to be when they first started up, but they're, as, as they've gained popularity, the price gone up a little bit, but there's still still a lot of oh, surprisingly yeah. good beers on there as well. Got a really good range of German beers. I mean, if you, yeah. it's the fact that they sell Yankee and Kraut beers. It's like... Yeah. That's one of the things I'm, I'm massively looking at on the... Um, I think my rating, I'll just, I'll just say it now, um, for this out of five, I'm really impressed with it. It's uh, mm. kind of surpassed all expectations, so I'd give it a good solid 4.25 out of 5. Really, really good. I'm going to give it a 4.5 out of 5. 9 out of 10. Yeah, the, the only thing that's stopping me from giving it a 10 out of 10 is I've got not too many Baltic porters to um, um, compare. Yeah, yeah. In, good. and not just in a way of like comparing it to other beers, but just like as a point of reference. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, enjoyability to me it's ten because it's just ticking all the boxes. But to rate it properly, I think it's a four point five out of five, nine mm-hmm. out of ten. I had um, a cloud water. They did a Baltic porter. Um. I think it was back in back in the summer or, or, or early early summertime, some somewhere around then. It was in a can and I bought it and I weren't too impressed with it myself. I thought it was a bit the mouthfeel was a bit crappy. Mm. Um I haven't had that many myself. I know I know I was gifted one from Christoph and that was the Zewick. Is it Zewick, is it? The Baltic Porter, and that was bloody marvellous that was. Oh, is that like one of those like proper traditional? Yeah, big ABV. Yeah, big, big thick mouthfeel. It was fantastic. Yeah, I think there's there's a lot of like on like gems that need to be discovered from that sort of region, mm. even from like the bigger breweries out there because. I know there's this sort of like the stigma to big brewery and big macro brewery, but you can get some really good mass produced beers. Whether or not the company involved or whoever they're owned has some sort of agenda. Flavor wise, if the beer tastes good, I, I don't care. Unless it's like a, a genuinely like horrible or, you know, if it's like a neo-Nazi owned brewery, then of course you're not going to support that. But well, if it's like AB InBev, who you can clearly tell they want to get into the market and will try and do what they can to shut off the competition. It's like, yeah, I get it. But some of the beers that they do, some of the breweries they own, still do good beer. Mm-hmm. And I think either way, there's always going to be a craft brewery around. Yeah. 
There's always going to be fuckers around. So. That's the thing. It's like people always go on about, oh, everyone, they're all taking over each brewery. No one's taken over anyone. Rarely. Since, like, Four Pure or Beaver Town. And Beaver Town is just, like, a majority of them. Well, mm. like That's all died down now, isn't it? All that. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Thank God. Do my head in that was. Although I do, I do like that um, the design that someone made of the the Beaver Town school with the Heineken sort of circle. <laughs> I thought that was pretty good. I'd want that on a t shirt, but I'd still obviously fucking buy Gamma Ray, buy the yeah. buy the fucking keg load. That's such a good beer. I do buy do buy the keg load, and it sells very very well. Mm-hmm. I think about four kegs a week, which is crazy. 120 litres a week of Gamma Ray. That's how, that's how well it sells. And then neck oil, yeah. neck oil behind it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, neck oil. That's I'm not really me, of it. Yeah, that's where it's become a nothing beer. Yeah. It's just... Mm. The last couple of times I've drank it, it's just all I'm getting is like residual hop character because the body is so light. Yeah. You don't get the flavour of the hops, you just get that sort of like like aftermath. Yeah. Ball, ball, ball ball smog rocket. Yeah, yeah, smog rocket. And and is it eight ball? Eight ball rye, yeah. I like that. I actually really enjoyed this year's batch of um, what's it called? The, the pumpkin? No, no, the blood orange. Bloody hell! Bloody hell! Yeah, I thought this year's batch was really good, and I had my can like three months after it had been released, and it still tasted good. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had um, speaking of smog rocket, uh, Dean. I had it about. Two months ago, we had a chap come in from Beaver Town, come to the, the brewery. He was trying to sell his products and his wares, uh, doing like a little bit of marketing, trying to you know, walk us through everything. So he came in and brought like a fuck ton of like Beaver Town. And we, we obviously sell a load of Beaver Town. We sell, you know, Gamma Ray on, on draft. We sell neck oil in cans. And he kind of gave us some super mega fresh neck oil, which I have since reviewed and need to upload the reviews of. But like I had neck oil, which was like a week old in the can and it was fantastic and they also had gamma in a week old in the can it was really good but the smog rocket for me was like really nice beer eight ball and also dame melba uh which was a peach sour oh. that was really really nice and it's in it's in shops now but i think i had it about like a week before proper release so they were like saying oh yeah don't do it don't do any reviews don't do like a proper but like filmed it right in front of their faces and i was like i don't care this is going up you know yeah. one day so it doesn't really matter but it it was really really nice day mobile was really good but um yes smog rocket enable i think smog rocket. those are those are beers I've two beers that's enable. not had for such a long time so i'm gonna have to Rectify we really hard that. to find. That's a problem. I think I'll be able They're to really find them to... in Manchester tomorrow, in some places. I remember the first time I had smoke rocket, and I think it was out on my birthday, and I went out with the missus. We went to Milton Keynes, and we went to the Byron Burger. Yeah, and they had a special on, and it was uh, it was um, beef burnt ends. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I had smog rocket with it. And it oh, it was oh, that sounds glorious, man! Oh, it was top draw. But oh, I, had, I had that, and then um, I had my meal. I was just chill out for a bit, I, and then I had a can of gamma ray after as well. And I was like, "Wow, this is this is glorious stuff." This was. I think it was just it just bought gamma ray out, and I'd. I think I was. I weren't reviewing them, but I I, I can remember watching Robs and. Um, Simon's review of Gamma Ray when and he was like, Wow, you know, it was a wild beer at the time, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. But I remember the smog rocket in bottles. That was like the first time I ever had it. <laughs> I still got eight ball in a bottle. The, the only bottle that I had from Beaver Town was before I was doing reviews. Mm-hmm. And it was oh, like, yeah, there was before did reviews yeah, as well. It, it was some collaboration they did with an American brewery, and it was like a raisin beer. Oh, I remember that. Jesus. 
<laughs> oh no, Princeton. Back in day, I'll be worth some money. That he lies. Up fifteen. <laughs> Two thousand fifteen. Yeah. Let's not I went, go I went that bowled over years. by it. I think I had it in can as well, and I didn't. I didn't really like it that much. It was all right, but mm. it says on's go. Oh. Yeah, well, Saison. I I kind of weirdly love Saisons. I, I just can't. It's like wit beers. Wit beers and Saisons are the two styles. <laughs> I love that them. I, I just don't get. I just don't. Electric India is decent. Mm. Don't mind that. It's it's not bad. I think Electric India like it took me a long time to get into like kind of vice beers, vit beers and so on. I think one of my first sort of when in the early days of me getting into craft was uh, I used to drink Vedette Extra White. Oh uh, yeah. And I was the only person, this was even before um I know Pernell's, which is a restaurant in Birmingham. Um so Pernell's was like one of the first sort of Michelin star restaurants to actually kind of focus on actually bringing craft beer into, into the UK and putting pairing with their food. So they had Vidette Extra White and it went with some of their fish courses. Okay, it's not super mega craft, but back then it was fucking hard to get hold of. And I spoke to them, found out where to get a 24 pack of it and brought a 24 pack over to the UK. And then I it was drinking that all the time and fell in love with wheat beers. And then since then, I've I kind of got to the point where if I'm at home, I won't be able to drink a wheat beer, like a pint of a wheat beer. But if I'm at work, like we, we've got Van Stefana on, on draft on like every Vine single Stefana. time. Yeah, yeah on, on draft, it's fantastic. In the bottle, not so great, but in on draft, it's yeah, yeah. brilliant. So I have it all the time. I don't care the sort of price of it, you know, it's worth it. Um, so yeah, like I have it all the time, and then having um, yeah that. So it was, it's it's just a wonderful for me. It's like a wonderful start to try more of, and I think having the saison, uh, which I, I brewed a saison, and uh, like first time I brewed it was like, I I don't really know what I'm doing here. Let's see what happens. Um, and I think it was after the time we're drinking quite a few of the saisons out of the Belgian box, uh, and uh, from beer fifty two, and a couple of other saison they seem to supply us with it's like the style that you don't want let's get rid of it and give it to people from beer 52 um and so you yeah, had quite a few of them and it's like kind of wangling myself around to kind of liking them a little bit more and uh yeah brewed it and then for the first few months i was like i don't really like this and now i've got to the point where i'm like drinking pints of it quite regularly just not just to get rid of it but i, I kind of like really like saisons and wheat mm. beers i think it will take some time before you actually get your head round them, it was like I, I don't like barley wines, so barley wines. I can't drink all the time. Every day barley wines. Every, oh, are you Paul? Session barley wines. Although I've got to say, this um, the harvest style from JW Lee's is uh... again, yes, please. My if you one. Manchester, he can get it for like three pound a bowl. From a random pub in the northern quarter. Yes, please. If, you go so, tomorrow, uh, if, if, we're in, if we're in the northern quarter, I'll stop by, see if they've got any bottles in. Cause, uh... Thank you very much, because I need about 20,000 of them. Um, <laughs> that will buy me a pub. That'll buy a pub. That was, uh, that's a 2015 vintage. That, uh... 10 of them will buy me a pub. 10 of them. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if I buy 10 of them, I can buy a pub and then become a competitor <laughs> for Harry. Yeah. But he has, buy... he's got the whales as a, yeah. a head start. Ooh, so. Tough competition there, Peter. Tough. So I, I'm just going to do a strong ale pub. English oh, strong ale. All these. Pub. Don't have these. But yeah. There was, there's a pub in Birmingham for sale, which I kind of had my eyes on. And I really like it because there's been four stabbings and one shooting in the pub. And it's a free house. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. so just, just included. Yeah, yeah, best pub. That's all I need. One shot is all it takes. Well, there you go. You've got a plethora of opportunities to name that pub. 
Nine stabs is all it takes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you could call it the Crimson Tide, but <laughs> I think some people might have a bit of trouble with that. Or just uh, come here, get stabbed. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Crimson Tide, uh, I'll read the comments. <laughs> so, Rod from Rod JB Adventures says, Cheers, guys. Cheers, Cheers Rod. my friend. Hope you're doing well. Get your uh, beer on. Get your beer on. Although, Rod's gone into the malt liquor business now, so. Oh. It's a real shame. How the mighty have fallen. Mm, disgusting. <laughs> And then we've got um, Paul says, hi, all sexy joy boys. Hi, Paul. Hope you're doing well. Again, been a long time. And then he's wrote, hitting an airplane soon, heading home from Montana. Very nice. And he also says, Fullers is mass produced, and I love them. Yeah, I've got no qualms at all with Fullers. I think the... Mm. I think it's what what defines mass produced is something I had like in a in a conversation with my head head brewer of the whole company. What do we think is head is like kind of mass produced? Because Brewdog is not mass produced. We think it is, but it's not. John oh. Smith's is mass produced. Yeah. So well, like mass production is when you've got facilities all over the place. They can't be that far off now, though, can they? They are a million miles away from it. So you wouldn't think Bre it, though, would you? You wouldn't think it. I mean, Brewdog yeah. produces the same amount of punk IPA the whole year as John Smith's, well, Carlsberg, John Smith's, Tetley's, whatever, do in one day. So that just kind of puts into scale. Yeah, that, that is... The uh... amount of John Smith's is around. And we don't even think there's that much, you know, but there is... It's just... And they're back to macro. Yeah. That's just crazy. Yeah, I think people really need to take the stick out of their arse when it comes to uh, overly defending like craft beer and then vilifying though the breweries who they think have sold out and stuff. Because it's like, as Harry said, if you break it down, their output of one beer mm. is vastly smaller compared to yeah. the actual big boys see that, that's it's like i just we've had this conversation loads but it's just i'm not really too fussed if no. if no, as, long as, as long as you don't compromise quality i've got no problem but if you do i'm just not going to buy it i'm not going to make a song and dance about it i'll find something that i can enjoy it's just i don't need to like create petitions and mm. uh, you, you could buy you could buy a small small batch stuff though and and the batch at the time could be ropey yeah in yeah. it is yeah just how it is any brewery that that be anything. Really. Fucking hell, this is awful what they're playing at and then you know a couple of weeks later you maybe maybe buy a can again and think, well, bloody hell, wow, it's different from last time sort of thing. I, I think the problem for me with that is that a lot of breweries just don't own up to it. Like saying, yeah. oh, we had a bad batch. Like, so my most recent problem was with Twisted Barrel, and they just, like, they had quite a few. I, every single can I bought from them for some time was, like, a bad batch, and, and it kind of was reflected badly in my reviews upon them. Mm. And then I... Then tried their beers the other night. I, I was like, they had a tap takeover uh, yesterday at Craft Beer Bar right by work. And literally walked away, I finished work at 10 last night, walked up there. My mates were on a break. He had about 15 minutes. And I was like, smash two, two different thirds down and see what they're like of their new beers. And they were absolutely banging. They were really, really good, like you know, hype good, one of them was. And um, the brewer was there. And I know I've said things about their beers in the past. I didn't want to confront him and say, say that, you know, about his beers at the time, but they were, they were so damn good. And it's just like, if you would just admit to one or two of your beers being bad, 
then it will do the world of good. I mean, I can understand why they don't because they want to get the beer sold, but it, you know, it do the world you know, world of good if they ever say, yeah, this batch wasn't quite as great as we hoped it would be, or this batch wasn't quite what we wanted it to be. The next batch is going to be fantastic, or you know, whatever we've got coming out is going to be good. They, I think a lot of people just like make the beer want to get rid of it. Um, yeah. Well, you know what, whatever it is, and nine times out of ten, people won't notice all of the kind of you know, they'll drink it and won't notice all the things in it, all the bad things about it, or the off flavors or whatever. So a lot of brewers think they can, get, you know, wing it and get away with it. I've been getting like that myself, you know, thinking I can, you know, wing it on certain beers, and sometimes you do, but um, too many people do it too often is all I'd say. And, uh, I mean, I I applaud Verdant for for what they did a few weeks back with, with them exploding cans, where they sort of offered a, you know, I think it worked out to be like fifteen quid or something like that when you weighed it up, yeah, free P and P and all that and replacing it and all that. I mean, you know, they take a hit for it, but you know. They put their hands up and said, you know, there's a balls up about something to do with yeast, wasn't it? Some dodgy yeast that they acquired or something like that? Um, I think, yeah, it was I th I th probably due to them uh, selling the beer kind of before it was ready. I don't really know. I didn't buy any burden beers for some time because... They were experimenting been... with the new yeast strain. Yeah, I think there's been... Prob I don't think it's just down to the uh -huh. yeast. I think there's been a couple of different problems all over the place. You know, they've been doing new beers, new styles, and it's just been I mean it's much like love Verdant. There's been yeah. a few there's been a few different problems um in different beers. I, I just haven't touched their beers for some time. They're not quite what I go for anymore. I've kind of been going for a lot of American stuff and seeing, you know, what that's all yeah, about. That's and, about like, yeah. Related yeah. to that, whether it's worth it. And so far I've I've had a fucked number of half. And as much as it is twelve pound a can, and a lot of people think that's a fuck ton of money, it's worth it. You know, if you were buying a nice bottle of red wine or a nice bottle of yeah, white wine or something, you'd, you'd spend more. Oh yeah, that. definitely. Yeah. And no, for me, it's just the same. Yeah. No, I get, I get your, I get your logic on that, on that angle there. Mm. You get what you pay for. You know, you can go out and, and buy a bloody three pound bottle of wine, but it's not going to be much cop, is it? But yeah, you can spend it, spend a little bit more and, and get something. Yeah, I get that. I do yeah. get that. But to be honest, most of the things I'm buying are double IPA as well, which kind of makes the price a little bit more fair. You know, the the, the ones I've got here, we've got a oats. It was eight point five. 8.5, 8 8.5, 8 and a 8. Four back session, then. Yeah, four back session, 48 quid. But you never know. In Harry's bar, things might be lower prices, but no, no way. Bar. Yeah. We'll have old Roger on, on cask permanently, on hand pool okay. number one. It's, it's one thing I do want to do is... Roger himself. My, my utopian bar would be tap one carling tap two by the oh. tap three <laughs> another generic heineken worthington cream flow don't forget that one tap four worthington cream flow and then the rest would be like craft as fuck you know the rest on on, on the keg and then all the cask would be like you'd have good old but like old roger tap one <laughs> tap two would be golden pride and then the rest yeah. would be like oh, yeah I can't wait for go it's golden pride season soon. Can't wait for it. Get it on cask again. I'll be ordering. I literally asked Golden uh, asked Fuller's a couple of weeks back, can I buy a pin of golden pride? If not, a nine gallon of golden pride, see what it is. Mm. Because I'd drink it. If yeah. it was off, I'd drink it. I'd still drink it. Taste don't ca don't care if it tastes like vinegar, I'd drink it. The corner shop up the road, he's, he's just got a load in again. Two pound nineteen a bottle. It's that's value, so cheap. That value all day long for that. And considering, it, yeah, Golden Pride, he said people don't. It, it it sells a little bit, but people opt for the um, ESB or the the Porter or the the um, Flat Cab Stout. 
oh, which yeah. are 260 a bottle. I'd be golden pride all day. Yeah, Black Cab's, not, Black Cab's nice on draft. It's fantastic. Uh, on draft or even in cask, if you can get it, it's fantastic. I have um, to try that. I had it in a can once. Yeah, in a can too. I, I think in a bottle I've had it um, more times. But on cask, it's wonderful. I had it like once on cask. And I was like, I think we, we'd have been, me and my mate been on a bit of a pub crawl. And then we went up to this um, pub, which I never normally go into. And we just dropped in there and just back in Nottingham when he used to live there. And we were like, oh, Black Cow. I was like, I've, you know, I know the brewer from you know, followers. Let's try that. I've heard some good things about it. Had it straight on cast out, straight on the handle. I was like, this with a nice, good, tight sparkler on it as well. Not the way it's supposed to be served. And it was absolutely delightful. <laughs> oh, it's just a wonderful beer. And then I proceeded to have about another further five pints of it and then can't remember the rest of the evening. But it was a wonderful beer. Yeah, it's it's one that I've always wanted to try, but I've just never, never really seen it. Mm. I just say you see it. I would I wouldn't even bother with the bottle to be honest. I'm just try and cask. If you see see it, cask or keg, it's fantastic. Keep an eye off that because they're just some of these. Like I hate the term trad. Mm. But there are yeah. some proper old school trad beers that proper classic. Yeah, I kick myself the times I have seen them when I've not drank them. Mm. Brodies is another good example. So Brodies are at IMB. So well, you, you'll see them maybe. Are, are you going tomorrow? Is it? Uh, yeah, tomorrow. So. Um, I know, know there's some Brodies, like keg, whatever, but some of the Brody stuff, some of the stronger Brody stuff I've seen has been really good from people who are there. Um, so Brodies, I think they're like, are they, I think they're London based or maybe Manchester or whatever, but you don't see them. I think the only time I've ever seen them was at Manchester Beer Festival in 20, maybe 2014, when I last went, or maybe 2015. And the, the quality of their beers, they're always quite strong, but they're really, really good. Um, there's not many places you'll find their beers either. Mm -hmm. So Cottage Wines, you get them a lot, uh, but I don't go there anymore. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of them around there, but they're really, really good. They're, they're, they're nice. Imperial Stout, they're, they're very good. Very good. Yeah, there's, 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 that's fine. It's like I'm more excited most time about like coming across some good old school beers than I am with what's popular mm. at the time. But um, yeah, the, the, tomorrow's going to be absolutely mental. I'm going to probably end up drinking all of the beers uh, first fear checker bringing over. Mm -hmm. And then there's a really interesting collaboration from Stone Berlin and... Handscraft and Co., which is like a quince hazy IPA. Ooh. Even though I'm trying to stay away from the hazy IPAs because they're, they're just juice. Yeah, just juice. Hashtag just juice. But um, yeah, there's 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 uh, an interesting just juice, just juice, all the juice, all the juice. Just get carriage stuff, Harry. I don't bother with carriage, to be honest. Uh, I've had okay. soup. And then I've had because uh, I'm thinking that, that bottle share we're going to do in I, I can got a couple of cans of the uh, the double IPA soup. Yeah, bring it down because I I yeah, haven't I tried that. I've seen it. Yeah, I mean I'm I trying to save some of this. Or woods or not. I've got. I think I was planning on saving uh, perpetually green and Duello mosaic. I mean I've got two cans of these each, so I'll, I'll save some for the actual. Uh, vid that we do and probably one of these as well which is uh mosaic daydream double mosaic Day daydream which is no mm. doubt it's going to be wonderful i've got uh, a few dark beers as well i've got the i've got another uh is it a br uh, brewery i bought one down last time didn't i remember uh, that bomb oh yeah, yeah, brewery, yeah. Down? i i've got uh, all well, was it the mint, mint crisp or something it was a mint Mint something you did last time. Yeah, mint. Yeah. 
This is the autumn maple that I'm bringing down this. this That's going to be dangerously good, is all I know. Yeah. Yeah. Well aged. Good good uh, year and a half on it as well. It's got to be. Good. But I've got the Orval box still, which needs to be done at some point. So I'll try and pick up a uh, 2018 bottle of Orval, and then we'll do the Orval box at the same time. Um but yeah, we'll we'll sort it whether you want to keep over here at the night because it's probably easier if you do. It would probably be best to yeah. I don't fancy myself going back on a train, Ahmed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. no, thank you. Yeah, because uh, I'm I, I end up in London. Yeah, so last time was <laughs> well, we will still go for that pint at the Greyhound because the yeah, Greyhound. Love it. Like, <laughs> the Greyhound is where I live. Barrel as well, mate. I think yeah. To, to, to be honest. If you want to do a two-nighter, I can sort it out. Uh, so if you come up in the Friday evening and we can do Twisted Barrel on Friday evening uh, and then we'll do the Saturday day of the share and then the evening in the share as well. We'll also a Saturday day, go to the pub and that's probably like a, a shout, but uh, if you can do it, that is. I'll see I'll see because it's the seventeenth of November, isn't it? I know I've got I've booked off the sixteenth of November, but that's because my daughter we're going to be having a look at some colleges and stuff because it's that time of year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, there might be a problem, but I mean Saturday's definite. You know, the seventeenth. Yeah. That's yeah, you know, that's nailed on. Yeah, cool. I mean, if if not, I, either way, I can book off the. So I, I can swap my Sunday, so I can do my Sunday shift on a different day. Even um, if we just go, go up to the ground for a couple and then just do a, do a bottle share, whatever you know. Yeah. Good, you know, easy going. No problem with that. Yeah, because the ground's got, it's got, I find during the week, it's got fantastic beers. Weekend, it's shit. It's a bit shit. So, uh, like I've been down, I'll I went down on. Half a pint of bass. And I'll half a pint of bass. Half a pint of bass. That's what, that's what, like, on, um, when we went to, on Wednesday, me and my dad, so I've been doing all my garden all morning and then we, we, we went off, to, off there and he had a pint of bass and then i had i'd normally have two pints whilst they're drinking down so he's working his way through a pint one pint but i had uh, little critters they had a little pale ale was me 3.6 percent and it was just just a ticket it was you know nice and fruity nice and sweet 3.6 percent and it was just not there yeah mild. Fixed, mild's always on oh, oh fixed mild. Yeah, that was always on. So that's that's it's all the time. That's my normal like, second pint is I have that. So I have a you know something whatever they got on the L choice. So they've got always got bass and uh, green, not green king. It's something else by green king. Like maybe it's sometimes Abbott, something something else. Always bass and something else. And then they have two other guests, and it's like good luck. You know, you, you don't know what really what you're gonna get. It's gonna be something interesting. I think. Last time I went, it was Courage. Uh, the most recent time I went, it was no, last time I went, it was Directors, which was actually quite a nice point. And then, um, because they actually know how to serve it properly, um, and that's it, that's probably you get with a lot of cast help, obviously. Going to Directors back in the net, yeah. it, it was fantastic. It was I'll fun. have a pint of bitter, yeah. Oh, it was, it was yeah. wonderful. It was such a lovely point. Yeah, four point eight, really, really solid. Ooh, nice and pretty. I looked over it off with her. <laughs> <laughs> she was uh, first in the queue when it comes to handing out chests. Yeah. Classic oh, partridge. Yeah. Oh. That's so, about the old school. The old school, there's nothing wrong with the old school. Mm. This is, Pete, when, if you come down here, you'll have to see the, the the ground. It is like a proper old school pub. You, you, yeah, there's, nice. It is yeah. a real... I go, does I go it there every, every in, Tuesday, every everyone Wednesday. Everyone goes quiet and stares yeah. at you. Yeah. Does, it, does it still smell of cigarette smoke, even though you're not yes. allowed to smoke indoors? Yes, it's a, it's the tiniest pub you'll visit as well. You can probably fit comfortably. I say very, I can say comfortably, twenty people in there. Wow. It's quite low roof as well, isn't it? Yeah. You had to go down on your knees, didn't you? It's, it's 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 a bit of a tiny pub. So when I go in, you know where we went in through the car park, the back entrance. 
Yeah. I normally go and there's a like a big table on there. I normally go in there for lunch on like a Tuesday or a Wednesday, and then they've got another table and which will sit about six. So that, that that one there probably you know five comfortably, six at a push, and then you've got six and then probably a four and a two, and about a three two and then maybe a six and that's about it. And then you've got oh, it's, it's, really it's, oh. it's so cheap, so cheap. What I want to know are you two two halves of uh, feasting, please, uh, boss. Did it, and it was like bloody. He said two two pound twenty. I said yeah. now I want two. He said yeah, it's 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 it is two. I thought, wow. <laughs> one ten a pint, one ten a half even. Yeah, it's Jesus. I uh, know it's, it's 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 a lovely pub, and they got a really nice outside to it. I mean, I I go there all the time. Because it's me and Stuart went in the, you know, on that day. Uh, I think we went in the week after as well. Went for a you know stroll down, and had um, you know half in there and then walk back. For me, from my house, it's about, about an hour's walk, but driving it's about five minutes mm. uh, because you know, you're walking along the canal. It's a bit like all over the place. Now, yeah. So, um, but yeah, it's it's a lovely pub. Uh, it's one of camera pubs. I think they've got quite a few awards and stuff. And the beers we tend, you know, sometimes you get some crazy stuff from Allendale in there. Uh, so they had a doctor of something from Allendale. It was like a, it was just like hype beer. And I'm like, they, they don't even know what they're getting in here. It's like crazy <laughs> hype beer. It's, it's like almost as if they got other half in, but it's like English other half on cask. And they, they, they don't know what they're doing. And it's just wonderful. It was some really nice. I think the yeah, first time I had. Good location. Yeah, I mean, it's just you know, right on the canal, got plenty of custom, mm -hmm. really yeah. good food, simple food, but really good food. Uh, like I, I normally go and have plowmans, and then I think on Wednesday I had hammock and chips, Ooh. and then uh, it was just gorgeous. And I think my mum my had like a rack of ribs, and I was like fucking taking them all. And oh, yeah, food. Yeah. Yeah. good pies, and it's really really solid food. Can't be a pie. chicken pot pie, Ooh. wonderful. Oh. It's just a. I'm making myself hungry yeah. thinking about it. You can imagine we get decent portions in there and all, none of this pot. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, big portions, though. Really big portions. So it's a proper Midland thing as well, Dean, you'll probably know, is serving a couple of slices of white bread with a fuck ton of butter on yeah. the side in a packet. Butter. Yeah. yeah. Bread, butter. Have a good piece and some uh, nice piece and then uh, some. Uh, and egg and chips, gorgeous. Yeah. Nice fucking oh, baguette, oh, it's far on shit. Just a piece. This deconstructed uh, gastro yeah. bollocks. It's a deconstructed yeah. cottage pie. Deconstructed cottage pie. Yeah. It's like oh. ass juice on a plate. Ah, uh, but yeah, I'm gonna have to cut it off here because I've got. A very early start tomorrow and a very busy day tomorrow but uh you guys are more than welcome to stay offline and pass the link around if anybody yeah, else wants to come on for a bit yeah i'll have to open up another beer and drink more and probably yeah, eat I'm, I'm gonna have a beer. yeah so, so take it easy peter yeah, yeah. you too and, uh, have fun tomorrow uh, I'm, sure I'm sure I will. You. I'm sure there'll be updates on uh, Instagram if there's free Wi-Fi. Uh, actually, I think I should read the comments before I leave because oh, yeah. uh, that's a terrible habit that I have of just letting comments <laughs> run. Bye. People will see. So, very quickly, uh, Paul says, 88 Grains Brewery, pure filtered ale. See if you get the reference. Completely yeah. over my head, that one. Uh, then Craig says, Holy cow, Bell is great. Winter seasonal now. Mm -hmm. And then uh, he said, Harry's pub should be called The Stabbing Arms. <laughs> it's a really good name. Uh, then we've got Brett from Beer to Beer Reviews. How you doing, Brett? He says, Hey, all. And he says, I hope you and Rob get on midnight. 
Architect and Connect Barrel Aged Umbral Abyss by Vibrant Forest. No. No. If you want to commit suicide, buy beer. That buy is beer the beer you want to go for. Okay. If, if tomorrow gets a little bit heavy, I know to, uh, to finish Umbral myself Abyss. off. And then uh, the last comment is from Craig. It says, Brodie's in London. They have some pubs here in London. Uh, bro, um, yeah. I, I thought I misread that then, but. Yeah, Brody's. You just read it like a reason. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> no, nothing new there, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, massive thank you to everyone who's watched. And of course, massive thank you to uh, my co hosts. And uh, yeah, both beers. Highly, highly recommended if you come across them. And uh, I think that they, they paired well together, actually. Mm. Yeah, no, it came, you know. Well, one after the other. I think Baltic Porter is definitely my favourite. Yeah, yeah, uh, too Baltic Porter. It was really good. Um, I think it's definitely probably my favourite out of the box, even higher than Cream Ale. Yeah, I'm not sure what my favourite has been yet. Um, I did have a good West Coast IPA from Lempke Brewery, which came in the second box that I ordered. Hmm. That was good. Or the C4PO from BRLO as well, which was a oh. West Coast IPA brewed with the classic like C hops. Mm. And the Germans know how to brew West Coast IPAs really, really well. Yes. But uh, yes, anyway. So, can I end this there? Massive thank you to everyone who's watched. And uh, yeah, until my review 26. Hope you enjoyed it, and we shall see you later. Cheers. Yes.